This is Sway. 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 In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. I'm gonna shake your body. Wake your fuck ass up. That cross your line. Ether Chandler. Season 3. Penny Dreadful. May 1st. On Showtime. <laughs> you feel like when you talk about this 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 series, you you gotta use that dark menacing voice, totally, because cause that's the that's kind of what I think when I man I get scared to watch Penny Dreadful sometimes, um and and then we have Ethan is here, well a, AKA you want to do the honors there DB you said you you never get a chance to introduce our guest, go ahead you do the intro go ahead all right man we got wait, 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 big it up go ahead go go for it big it up big it up <laughs> yeah go for yours all right <clears throat> oh ladies and gentlemen. From Penny Dreadful, he plays the character Ethan Chandler, Josh Hartnett. Thank you so much. Yeah, we could have. There, there, there was no. There were no superlatives in there. There was nothing like you know. Come on, we could have done better. Damn, <laughs> Josh, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> I want to apologize. I can't, to you. No, no, I can't, it's all right. I can't, I can't replicate your your intros, man. You're, they're just. Well, I gave him such a good one last time he was here. I thought this year I'm going to try something different. You know, let anybody else give it. Heather, you want to give it a shot? Yes. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Citizens of Sway in the morning. As a fan of this man, I like to introduce him in my own way. He is a lean, vanilla, love to lick. Ladies love to touch. Want him to lay in the boudoir with him and feel all over his body. Oh. He came in with glasses that I hope have x-ray vision and double vision <laughs> that can see through my clothing. What up? It is the one and only <laughs> Josh Harnick is here, yeah. baby! Oh, here I wasn't saying all that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. That was, uh, they are x ray. Yeah, they are x ray. They're pop. Lucky guy. How you been, Josh? <laughs> I'm not a lot better now. <laughs> not a lot better now, man. Uh, man, so season three is coming up, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. season yeah. three comes out. <laughs> In, uh, in about a week, okay, in a few cool. days. I'm a little embarrassed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Oh, we should take a moment. Yeah, 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 give a hug. There you go. Damn, he got Heather just squeezing his back. I hate that, Heather. I didn't, you know, it's real, y'all. <laughs> just to just, you know. Yeah. Oh, sorry, oh, sweet. sweet. <laughs> you guys are so, so good. Uh, no, nah, man. Um, <laughs> now, last time, since you came last time, I, I really, I've always been a fan of the, 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 the horror tales you mm. know, and and after you know, when you came last time, I, I didn't fully understand Penny Dreadful. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. And then you were breaking it down for me, and now when I watch it, it's totally understandable. It truly is, man. It's I'll be honest with you. When I was a kid, I remember when The Exorcist came out, mm. and uh, right, and uh, I remember being a kid at home by myself, stupid, um, and I started watching it at nighttime. And um and I grew up in Oakland, so I figured, you know, what's gonna scare me on TV? <laughs> and when that little girl next turned around and you know, I had nightmares. I called my mother. She was out playing spades somewhere in North <laughs> Oakland and I called her to come home. Penny Dreadful gives me some of that, especially in those promos that you guys have too for it. Right. I it's very it's dark to me. It is. It's yeah. very dark. You yeah. know, it's got it has flavors of that sort of psychological horror that you're talking about yeah. for sure. It's not it's not just blood and guts and stuff like that. That's actually kind of a small portion of the show. It's mostly about things that really actually terrify you deeply, yeah. you know. And I and and I think that this guy and uh, well the guy who wrote it, John Logan has written five Academy Award nominated films. Uh -huh. uh, obviously not a lightweight. He took this on because he wanted to sell, tell a story that was more of an allegory. Yeah. You know, and it, so it's, there's a lot going on under the surface and then on top of it, it's just incredibly scary as well. Yeah. Um, the Exorcist Mine was pol Poltergeist. Yours was Poltergeist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When that came out, I was way too young to watch well, it. Yeah, you shouldn't have done it, right? I, you shouldn't have done <laughs> it. I watched it at a buddy's house. My parents wouldn't let me, so I watched it at a buddy's house and I ran home afterward just yeah. terrified, you know, mm. in the middle of the night. Was, and, it, was, uh, it, was it that old preacher who used to sing? Cain. Oh, my Reverend God. Cain. Yeah. Cain. Oh God my. is in the moon. <laughs> was it number two or two. whatever when they Both were in the skyscraper? Two. No, that was three. That was three. Okay, yeah. in the skyscraper, she looks up, She looks out the window, and he's standing there, looks up with the brim of his hat on the window washers thing. Mm -hmm. oh, that image will stick with me forever. Penny Dreadful. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, let's talk about the show. <laughs> <laughs> That's but, not But I'm show. just saying, Penny Dreadful. Uh, see, these, these are movies, yeah. and they, they make a movie, and then a sequel comes out years later. Penny Dreadful is something you can watch, you know, every week. Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and every week. 
You're going to have that poltergeist slash exorcist kind of, but the writing is so excellent. The writing's excellent and the production value is insane. We, yeah. sh- we They spend more money on this show than most movies. We just yeah. like, we, wow. we, 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 we shoot it for six months. And it's only nine episodes, so you kind of get a really good, satisfying chunk of uh, like a film type quality. Yeah, you know, really good film type quality. Yeah, sure. Did, are you able to work on other projects while you're doing this? Well, now I am, yeah, because I get six months off, and uh-huh. so I'm shooting three films this summer and just sort of like <laughs> kind of what the putting them in there really quickly. Well, got it. You got a girl, <laughs> wow. three months. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, he, he's a father. Your father, now, right? Yeah, I'm a dad now. He's a dad. He got to I got to work. You got to work. work. Yeah, True. exactly. You got to yeah, put yeah. away that college. I'm going That's through that right. now. My daughter's about to go to college next semester. Yeah, she's got a few years till college, my girl. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, that's your first? First, yeah. Yeah, what's that yeah. like, man? Dude, it's changed everything. Right. But it is that sort of feeling that immediately you want to provide. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. the first instinct. Mm-hmm. It was so bizarre to me. I never really had that instinct. Mm-hmm. I was always sort of on, on this path. I thought I was more of an artist. Mm-hmm. I was just going to do things for the actual love of the work. But now it's like, I got I to gotta make some money. You know, like, because <laughs> yeah. she's yeah. expensive. Yeah, it's expensive, man. You want to provide and protect, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, so it's hard to be away from your, your kid. It's the most difficult thing. Especially in the, in the beginning. And yeah. uh, and then once she starts saying, she's saying, she not saying Dada or nothing. Yet. She's only five months old. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Well, my, <laughs> Give her a chance. My, my daughter starts speaking. <laughs> Uh, Spanish at four months there, yeah, Josh. She, you know, yeah. oh, wow. <laughs> she was, I'm sure she was fluent at four months. <laughs> yeah. way. Of course she was. <laughs> My daughter, Josh. Yes, um, yeah. Sure. Yeah, your daughter this is another thing I didn't expect is that people are so competitive. Yeah. Yeah. It's daughter. unbelievable. Everybody's always talking about things that, yeah, I'm sure she's incredibly advanced. Yeah, man. You got how many pictures you got in your wallet? <laughs> your phone. We have phones now, oh, okay. man. What, right. what is this, 1994? Oh, yeah. <laughs> No, you have pictures in your phone, and if you're a really great dad, oh. you'll have them in your wallet, too. I'm just, hey, I'm just going to throw it out. All right. You win. You okay, win. Okay, okay, great. Yeah. Hey, what is Eva Green like? Eva's fantastic, man. She's really private. Um, I think most of the actors on this show are very private people, and it's mm-hmm. nice to work with people that aren't kind of always out there trying to convince you to do things that you don't mm-hmm. want to do, and these guys are all very just talented. <laughs> that you know what real. I mean? Well, <laughs> I mean, whatever you're thinking about, uh, think about differently, I guess. <laughs> but um, but no, she's uh, she's a really cool, you know, very normal actress, just mm-hmm. very very relaxed and kind of keeps things keeps herself to herself, which is uh, which is a rarity these days. You yeah. Know? Yeah, my my team we're we're always trying to get each other to do stuff with each other, and it, it never happens. Um, Eva is such a talented actress, is yeah. why you know. And to me, the the most talent, even yourself, you know, uh, the most talented actors and actresses to me always have something eccentric about their personality. And 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 to your point, and, and that's the kind of thing uh, people seem to be more to themselves and you know isolated at times. I was curious right. what her what her process is like before she goes into character. Um, we never, I never see her go into character because she just seems to be sort of in character on set most of the time. Um, but we're, yeah, we're, you know, we're all pretty committed to it because it's, it's tough doing a show. I've never done it before and it's to, to shoot 12 hours a day for six months straight and shoot nine hours as opposed to two hours of of film. You know, you just don't see the end at the beginning. So you're kind of constantly... Uh, just, I mean, you're just working your ass off the whole time. So, just working your ass yeah. off. You yeah. know how it had to be? Mm-hmm. You just squeeze the man who just has a five month old baby, you know. <laughs> well, people was going to ask me how it felt. I was worrying about the citizens this way in the morning. <laughs> All right. It's real. Josh Hartnett is here. You want to talk with him? 888 742 3345. We got a game for you coming up next. It's Ooh. called Keep It Real. <laughs> Plays Ethan Chandler in the series Penny Dreffo, um, premiering season three's premiering May 1st on Showtime. Yep. Uh, Josh, I'm curious, because you've done so much different work, like back when I was just in middle school, I remember just seeing you and having so many friends that were like, yo, that is my freaking hunk of a month, yo, Mm -hmm. Josh Hartnett. And so now, just looking at you progress and mature in the industry, what do you look for in different characters? Like, what is appealing to Josh Hartnett right now? Well, what's interesting to me is that the things that are coming at me these days are much more. The, the characters are just so much more complex. You know, as you get as you get older, the characters just become more interesting. Uh, they don't trust young. They want young actors to play the hero pretty right. much all the time. You know, similar sort of character. But these, I mean, I just played this guy. I just finished actually yesterday. Wrapped and came back here to New York. Uh, this guy named Eric Lamarck. True story. 
uh, who was snowboarding in Mammoth, went off the backside in 2004 mm. and, uh, and got caught in a storm for two days and then had to find water. And then when he found water, he was completely lost and was lost out there for eight days, had to wow. eat part of his own leg to survive. What? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. And uh, ended up losing both of his legs. And he was on set for the last couple of days. Mm -hmm. And that challenge was just, it was like doing a monologue for, you know, the, the entire film because it's just me on a mountain, uh -huh. you know? And so, like, I'm looking for, every time I'm just looking for something that's going to challenge me. Usually it's something that scares me. Like with Penny Dreadful, I had no concept of whether or not I'd be, I'd be any good at doing TV because mm -hmm. it just, it goes, it goes on, things change at their own pace. You never know what's going to come next. And I just sort of, uh, I, I saw it as something interesting. And I try to work with the best people possible. That's really it. Right, of yeah. course. You know what else, too? Going back to when I was revealing about um, in middle school and every woman, well, girl's eyes were on you. I have a, a hunch that you didn't really want to become a sex icon. That's what I feel. I don't mm -hmm. know. You can confirm that. But I remember, I think it was like three times for like teen people would have you for like the 25 sexiest young mm -hmm. men or whatever. And a lot of times you'll see guys take advantage of that. But right. I feel like you took more of like the serious role in Hollywood. Did you feel that? Yeah, well, label? I just I, I didn't particularly want to be wanted to be pigeonholed at that point. I was young and I felt like there was a I had an opportunity to sort of uh, I needed to seize the opportunity to be. Uh, an artist if I could be you know what I mean I wanted people to kind of see me as someone who could stick around not just uh, the hunk of the month or whatever <laughs> so I um, yeah so I worked very hard at doing lots of different things I started directing I started writing I have produced a few films and just sort of I don't know I tried to uh, make sure that I was going to stick around and be able to do things on all levels in this industry I, you know what Josh I, I've never saw the hunk thing in you man I, I, you know it was <laughs> it, it, your eyes. It never oh. crossed my mind bro Come I, on, I just saw you as an actor man I didn't see the hunk I, thing I appreciate that yeah man I, I don't know where that came from um, Dempsey's <laughs> on the line from Montana what up Dempsey yo hey what's going on what up hey, man? man hey man I just wanted to say uh to Josh, hey, I remember uh, Black Hawk Down was one of my favorite movies growing up. I mean, it was. Cool. I'm a history buff, so I've always been uh, interested in a lot of that, a lot of those things, like Saving Private Ryan. Um, a lot of the, a lot of the old movies from that are just depicted a lot of conflict, and I wanted to mm -hmm. say that Black Hawk Down was one of my favorites. It really exposed a lot, and uh, I just really liked it. I oh, really thanks a lot, man. Way. I remember. Uh, you from back when the Backstreet Boys were cool, so. Wow. Yeah. Well, little known fact, you know, I was the what twelfth member. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> wow, the Backstreet Boys. Yeah. All right, uh, Josh. Before you leave, man, uh, um, DB, man, it's our movie junkie. Came up with a good game for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, really, he's uh, he's a uh, he does all our movie uh, coverage. He's pretty much a, a movie nerd. I just suck at intro. Th there it is, man. All, All right, right. <laughs> uh, and then it's called Keep It Real. Here on this show, we like when our guests are honest and upfront. So we came up with a few questions, and all we ask is that you keep it real. Right now, on Sway in the Morning. Really got to appreciate the production value of that intro yeah, right yeah, there, man. I'm terrified, actually. We went all out. All right. <laughs> First question. Is it true that when you were 16, you were accused of attempting to rob a Dairy Queen? Yes. Mm. <laughs> ah! And we were making a short film. Ah. Yeah. And we robbed the Dairy Queen like 16 times over the course of the day, but some lady kept, called the cops and I guess gave them a play-by-play -play of what we were doing. Like they, we, they came in. They tried to rob the place. They ate a dilly bar. They left. You know what I mean? They came back again. I don't understand what she was thinking. World's dumbest criminal. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Wow, that's true, man. Did Gangs. you get arrested? No, they came. Well, they let us off because they knew we were making a film, and we had like squirt guns, you know. Oh, okay, all right. It was not, you know, it was, it was ridiculous. Okay, all right. Okay, number two. I read a quote where you said you'd rather have your heart broken than break someone else's heart. What was your worst breakup? Aww. Ooh, Ooh, worst breakup. Wow. I've, I've had a, I've had a few, pretty bad breakups. Uh, I'd say the worst was probably the first, you know? Yeah. Like, that's, you know, the first cut is the deepest, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That <Have> bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, you've turned down several roles in your career. Is there a role that you really wanted but you didn't get? Oh, tons. Yeah, I mean, there are lots of, lots of good roles that, I mean, year in and year out, you'll see. I mean, usually the problem is with me is I always want roles that I can't play. 
You know what I mean? I always want roles. I see other people that are completely like, I'm just not the right type. You know, I want to play the role that Ian McKellen got. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's just that I, I have this mentality inside of me. I'm, I'm always enough. like, I really want, yeah, yeah, I can't wait till I get old enough to play that role. Yeah. It's the stupidest thing, but that's the way I yeah, They're not going to let you play Jesse Owens, bro. That's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> that was Dude, another thing. That yeah, was, that was, that was do, yeah, Josh, yeah. don't do blackface. All right. <laughs> Number four, I heard that your sudden rise to fame, as you spoke about earlier, was a little overwhelming. If you could go back in time, what would you say to your former self? Uh, don't sweat it so much. Don't be too worried about what people think of you. Mm. Yeah. yeah, because yeah. you know, and when you're under that intense scrutiny, you tend to. I, I I tended to shy away from it, but now it's it's. Who cares? That's a breathable moment. Let's let that moment breathe. Mm. Don't worry so much about what people think of you. Let it breathe. Let it breathe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Mm. Great. Come on. Back on. Okay. All right. Last, last question. question. Last question. Last question. Yeah. You were born and raised in Minnesota. Mm-hmm. Give us your favorite Prince song. Ooh. I mean. Okay. I was listening to Prince the other day. Of course. Uh, it's so hard to pick. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, you got to go with Purple Rain just because it's it's just so iconic and just it's outside of his like normal sort of sex sort of driven mm-hmm. uh, oeuvre. It's more like the that's the breakup song, right? I don't know. There's something really touching about Purple Rain. I don't know. Everybody loves it, but I I love it too. That's when he crossed over, man. Did you ever yeah. get to meet him while you were out there? I did. I met him. I didn't meet him in L. I met him in L.A. actually. Uh-huh. I didn't meet him in Minnesota. Uh, an ex of mine was was friends with him, uh-huh. so uh, we hung out in a club once. <laughs> you hung out in a club with yeah, Prince? We did. Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah. Oh! Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what was that like? What was that like? Everybody was looking at him, which is pretty great. You yeah. know, like, uh, like, <laughs> hey, did he say, hey, jo- Josh Hartnett? Did he ever, you know, did he talk to you? Like, yeah, of course he talked to me a little bit. You know, he didn't ignore me. He there didn't weren't many me. people there. You know? okay. Not, at, I mean, not in our group. Wow. Um, but no, he's uh, he's he's from Minnesota. He's been such an icon of, mm. and uh, in my life growing up, he was like the the guy. He yeah. was the celebrity from Minnesota, and uh, you just you, it was innate. You just learned his stuff through osmosis because it was everywhere. Wow, uh, Minneapolis was such a interesting music scene back then. Yeah, and he was kind of at the top of it, and. Uh, and obviously, yeah, I just love his stuff, and I love what he kind of stood for and the way that he was, just he seemed to be in his personal life. I, I don't know. I have enormous respect for who he was, mm-hmm. was as an artist. Wow, Josh, yeah. man. Thanks yeah. for coming by, man. Thanks. All right, congratulations on all the success. Uh, Penny Dreadful, May 1st on Showtime. Make sure you watch it. And uh, we're going to dedicate this to Josh real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Sway in the morning, Josh. It's Sway in the morning. Only from Shea 45. <laughs> Oh! <laughs>